Well, hey there, Thump Nation. It's your old pal Taco Tom here. We ready to get real and get sober in the big book Alcoholics Anonymous. Did you know that when I got to Alcoholics Anonymous, I couldn't even read? You still can't. None of this is what's written in the script. Why do we even bother spending half the day to write a script if you won't use it? Sorry, Nation. That's AJ, my producer. He totally sucks. <laughs> One of those college nerds who never last five minutes in the rooms. You know, all facts and proof. No heart and gut. Like in the program. And I can read. I can read too. I just think the script is stupid like some freaking nerd wrote it. You wrote it? Exactly. Whatever. Can we get going? No one's even going to watch this. Y'all huh? God will. And he thinks I'm awesome. So that's all that really matters. But you, if you'd let me get to my point. Talk. I'm a producer, not a director. Do you get the difference? Yes, well, not really. What? I mean, yeah, Dave, but shut up. All right? Okay. So... I wanted to talk about the, the secret of sobriety. Now, this secret is something that was shared a long time ago uh, in a little mating uh, with some old timers who even have more time than good old Taco Tom. I know it's hard to believe, but sure enough, there was a time when even Tom was a newcomer sitting in the basement on Fifth Street with old Timmy T and old man Mike and good old buttfuck Charlie. We call him that because he was gay. And rat-faced Randy, you know, the retired mobster. And the oldest and wisest of them all. My sponsor, mentor, and best friend. Well, until he knocked up my wife and, well, the whole custody battle. The man I followed until his untimely death in the drunk driving accident. Not Fat Mike, the one that overdosed on the hair on, dropped dead. Nope. Hey, I'm talking about the one we called Other Fat Mike. Because there were two Mikes and both of them were a little on the hefty side. For a while, he tried to get us to stop calling him Fat Mike. He wanted to go by Recovery Mike. He even lost a bunch of weight and tried to get in shape. But he was always fat old fat Mike to us. Or just fat ass Mike. Or sometimes just fat ass. He eventually gained all the weight back like the fat fuck he was. God, I love that man. Wasn't nothing I wouldn't do for him. Apparently, except to stop calling him Fat Mike. Other Fat Mike. I got every right to call that fat fuck whatever I want to call him. The man stole my wife. Knocked her up. I was furious till he pointed out that she was just some dumb whore who hadn't even been clean six months when this all went down. I don't even know why they let women into AA. Their brains just ain't right for this stuff. Yeah, with all that empathy and critical thinking getting in the way, women don't stand a chance, do they? Oh, you got no idea. She's all crying about it. I don't know if I want to get married until the withdrawals pass. Near pig. Strange enough, that's what she used to say. You two get along great. Couple of know-it-all dumbasses knowing it all because they're dumb and don't know nothing and claim to know everything, but they're too dumb to not know that they don't know nothing. You should go visit her. I would go with you, but she won't let me. She became one of them fancy-smancy attorneys now. Got her one of them retraining orders. Thinks she's going to train me <laughs> like a dog. A restraining order? Exactly. That's what I said. I actually call it a sissified order for sissified stupids that got to have the court fight their battles for them. But <laughs> that's not a story for today. Today, well, <laughs> I, I want to tell you about the time that fat old fuck Mike a man I love and respect and have no resentment for, because I work the steps, damn it, told me the secret to staying sober. There he was, like a majestic god, encircled in huge smoky clouds emitting from unfiltered camel red cigarettes. 
a meager man of a mere 500 fat ass pounds. He was the poster child of sobriety, self control, and God centered living. It was about 45 minutes into the meeting, and he was just getting warmed up. We didn't care. Divorced and alone, we had nowhere else to be. We were just excited by his tales of womanizing and drunkard living. All the laws and whatnot he had broken brought back the good old days of bad living. We were so grateful to have behind us. He was just getting to laying down some old school AA wisdom. Wisdom he acquired from the very founders themselves. When I swear to God, he looked right at me. Um, didn't you say there was like five people at the meeting? I mean, the dude had to look somewhere. Well, there was lots of art in the walls and even some other stuff that was kind of fascinating. So this was not just an old man rattling about some half-truths he could barely remember, staring at the only guy with sparkly glasses on. No, wasn't like that. This was two men connecting in the rooms of recovery. Something you psychology nerds and science losers never get. So just shut up and let me tell my story. Well, are you done? Good. Now, where was I? I got me all flabbergasted and dumbfounded. Yeah, you guys were like making goo-goo eyes at each other? I know, dummy. Then why did you- Shut up! So he says the words I wanted to hear someone say my whole life. He says, I'm going to tell you guys the secret to sobriety. You want to know how to stay sober? Well, I lean in. Because this is the kind of shit that saves lives. I mean, this is time-tested truth talk. I wanted to hear every word from this great man. The man who had spent every evening for the last 20 years of his life sitting in a musty basement preaching the big book to losers that stumble in off the streets. You know, the ones who can't stay sober, who are defiant and only work the steps three or four times before thinking they got some better shit to do on a weekend than come up here. Now they're at home with their families, missing all this knowledge that could save their life. If I didn't hate them so much for being losers, I'd probably feel sorry for them. Frickin' losers. Well, so I lean in and making sure everyone knows I'm paying the most attentions than anyone else. When he tells me the one statement I live to to this very day, he says, if you guys want to stay sober, don't put alcohol in your body. You're an idiot. What? Oh, no, don't you besmirch the words that have kept me sober for over 22 years. What? That the secret to staying sober is not drinking? Little babies know that. Go get a baby. I'll prove it. Are you saying I'm a baby? No. What I'm saying is you're dumber than a baby. That if you and a baby were quizzed for knowledge, the baby would do better. I'm saying you're dumb, really dumb, and that this show is dumb, and that you, again, are dumb on this show, and that AA is dumb, and you have a dumb show about people saying dumb stuff to other dumb people because all the smart ones leave. Look, he was profound and very wise. I think you're confusing wise with common sense. Like the stuff everybody knows. Just because he changed how he emphasizes the words does not make it profound. Like this. Hey, Tom. That's Taco Tom. Okay, Taco Tom. Whatever. No, it ain't whatever. I got 15 taco stands in downtown Miami, damn it. I need to push that brand. Who do you think's paying for all this? You think I got these damn tacos on my forearms because I, I think it looks cool? Well, kinda. But you know how many people say I look like a fool? I don't know. All of them? <laughs> but yeah, pretty much. 
Except the people that work for me. That is, if they want to stay employed. <laughs> now that there is real spirituality. Okay. Get this. What if I said that the best way to not shoot yourself in the head is to not put a loaded gun to your head and pull the trigger? Well, duh. I mean, I'm not stupid. Okay. Now, what if I said that the only way to not shoot yourself in the head is to just not do it? Whoa, man. That's pretty heavy. Exactly. So see, it's just common sense with a little bit of word emphasis play put on it. No, I was talking about the whole shooting yourself in the head thing. Dude, sometimes you got some some profound shit to say. No, Tom. I will have to remember that the next time I'm thinking about keeping from shooting myself in the head. Well, all right. Well, that's all the time we have today. I want to thank you all for watching Thump Nation. And if you are struggling with shooting yourself in the head, just don't do it. That's all you got to remember is that you're just not going to do it. Well, yes, but seriously, people, seek professional help. There is real help out there. You just, you just got to keep looking. Yeah, you can find help at Alcoholics Anonymous. No. No, please seek real professional help. People who have some education in, in the subject matter. AA is, is really not going to help you here or help anybody anywhere. I don't know. Try something like smart recovery. At, at least they deal with some different mental obsession issues. There, there's even some medications that can be helpful. Regardless, the point is, is that you just keep trying. That That's what you got to do. Keep trying and don't listen to other people who say that they have the answer for you. Only you have the answer that's going to work for you. You just got to keep looking. Damn it, man, will you shut up? This is my show. The big book is the source of all knowledge in the universe. That's why I call this place Thump Nation, because all you got to do is thump and... Everything's fixed. You just got to know how to thump it right. D don't you start running credits on me, you dumb fucker. I I'm going to keep talking. D don't you cut off my mic.